We'll look at questions 16 through 20 from the ACT 2017-18 free test. It's going to be the math portion. Number 16, a car accelerated from one from 88 feet per second to 220 feet per second in exactly three seconds. Assuming the acceleration was constant, what was the car's acceleration in feet per second from 8, 88 feet per second to 220 feet per second? So what we have here is the distance is going to be the distance covered because we want to find out acceleration. So we're going to have distance covered divided by the time covered. So let's look at that here. The distance covered is going to be 220 feet per second minus 88 feet per second and the time the, that was covered is 3 minus 0. The reason why we have a 0 there is because at the starting point it's 0 seconds. So we have 132 feet per second. This is feet per second divided by 3 seconds. So this is going to give us 44 feet per second squared. So we have an acceleration of 44 feet per second squared. In a plane, the distinct lines A, B, and C, D intersect at a point A. Where A is between C and D. The measure of angle BAC is 47 degrees. What is the measure of angle BAD? So let's look at the lines. Let's draw the lines. We have one line right here. And we're going to call that line C and D. We also have another line. And that line is going to be the line AB. But we need to pay attention to something important here. It says the line, the point of intersection is at the point A. So we got A right here, we got B. Now, what we want to deal with here is that angle BAC, so this angle right here is 47 degrees. We need to find the value of angle BAD. So this is going to be x. So what we have is a situation where we have a straight line. And so because we have a straight line, angle BAC plus angle BAD must be equal to 180 degrees. BAC is 47 degrees, and we're told BAD is X. We have the sum is 180 degrees. So let's subtract 47 degrees from both sides. And we have X is 133 degrees, and that's going to give us D here. In which of the following are 1 half, 5 six, and 5 eighth arranged in ascending order? So ascending order means we're going from the smallest to the largest. And so what we're going to do here, the first thing we want to do for sure is to make sure we rewrite each of these fractions with a common denominator. So look at these two, six and eight. What's the lowest common denominator for this? Um, that is should be that should be twenty four, but let's see how we go about getting that. Two, six, and eight. Two is two to the power of one. Six is two to the power of one multiplied by three to the power of one. Eight is two to the power of three. So the L C D is gonna be we're gonna put down two and three and we take the greatest exponent each time. We've got three and one. So this is 8 multiplied by 3, which is 24. 
So now we're going to rewrite each of these. So one half, we're going to write it with a denominator of 24. So I multiply 2 by 12. So I multiply 1 by 12. And then 5 sixths, we're going to change it with a denominator of 24. So we multiply 6 by 4 and therefore multiply 5 by 4 as well. And then 5 eighths, we multiply 8 by 3 to get to 24, multiply 5 by 3 to get to 15. So here's what we need to do. We're going to arrange in increasing order. So we have 12 over 24 is less than 15 over 24, which is also less than 20 over 24. Now we're going to replace these with the original fraction. So 1 half less than 5 eighths less than 5 sixths. 1 half less than 5 eighths less than 5 sixths. In scientific notation, what is 670 million plus 700 million? Now, because we're going to write a scientific notation, I'm going to convert each one to scientific notation first. And the most important thing here, well, let's go ahead and convert each one. So, 670 million is going to be, let's see, we put a decimal marker here. Put a decimal marker here. We want to get to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, right here. So we have 6.7 multiplied by 10 to the power of 8. Let's look at 700,000, 700 million rather. We do the same thing. We want to get to right here. And this is where we're starting. So we go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So it's 7.0 times 10 to the power of 8. Now when we add them together, so very important thing to note here is we want to make sure that the exponents on the 10 are exactly the same. So we have 6.7 times 10 to the power of 8 plus 7.0 times 10 to the power of 8. This is the same as 6.7 plus 7.0 times 10 to the power of 8. So we get 13.7 times 10 to the power of 8. Now, we also have to rewrite 13.7 because that's not a, that's not in scientific notation. It's not correct that way. So we now have, we go from here back here. So we have 1.37 times 10 to the power of 1 times 10 to the power of 8. So which is going to be 1.37 times 10 to the power of 1 plus 8, which is 1.37 times 10 to the power of 9. This right here is exponent rule that we're applying. So 1.37 times 10 to the power of 9. Question number 20. For a trapezoid, A, B, C, D is shown below. A, B is parallel to D, C. The measures of the interior angles are distinct. And the measure of angle D is X. What is the degree measure of angle A? Just one of the properties of a trapezoid is that these two angles are supplementary angles. So that means that angle A plus X equal to 180 degrees. So angle A is 180 degrees minus X degrees. So we can rewrite that as 180 minus X degrees.